What's up, guys? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please smash that like button on the video and enjoy the show. It is an uncanny coincidence that these two planes went down four and a half months apart. They were both Malaysian Airlines 777s, of which there were only 16 in the world out of 28-some thousand really? commercial aircraft, yes. Well, in 2014, there was a country that was known to destroy Malaysian Airlines 777s. This was Russia. I like to tell the analogy of, imagine you're a chicken farmer, right? And you have had a chicken farm for many years and you've never lost a single chicken. And then one day you wake up and there's a bloody mangled chicken carcass on your front yard. And you don't have no idea who did it. Absolutely none whatsoever. And then four months later, you find when MH17 was shot down, um, there was um, a, re re I'm going to say retired in quotation marks, um, GRU, Russian military intelligence mm -hmm. officer named Igor Gherkin, um, who, um, you know, uh, said, oh, we shot down, hey, hooray for us. We shot down a, <laughs> a, a, a military plane belonging to the, those dastardly Ukrainians. Whoops. So hooray for us. And then it was discovered, oh, it wasn't a, a Ukrainian military plane. It was, um, it was a Malaysian <laughs> civilian plane. Um, so everyone was like, oh, look, they, they gave themselves away. Mm. Well, listen, Gherkin is a Russian military intelligence, right? We talked about Putin himself is a, is a spy. Right. Yeah. You're talking By about yeah, yeah. you're talking about people who's who's wake up every morning. Again, they have their Wheaties and they commit <laughs> mind fuckery. Right. Yes. That's what they do. And so you're going to take this guy's just you're going to take his his explanation like face value. This plane. So so everyone thinks that this guy right here on the screen. That's that's the man. Got it. He's in jail right now. Not in. Netherlands, where he was convicted of mass murder for killing all the people aboard MH17, but in Russia because he criticized Vladimir Putin. Ooh, that's a big no-no there. It's tough. <laughs> it's tough to be a hustler. You were doing so well shooting down planes. Now you're going to prison. <laughs> so, um, so Russian military intelligence becomes a very interesting suspect. Um, these are people who the little green men. Um, you know, the use of intelligence for military purposes to try to achieve your goals. Um, the, the, it's going to be a busy couple of years for the GRU um, yeah. because they're going to get up to all kinds of hijinks, which, which we can talk about. Some of them are very relevant to America. Can you talk about those? Sure. No. Um, but before I do, let me just fit, just to sure. put a cap sure. on this MH17 business. Um, initially, it was accepted by all right thinking people that this was a mistake. Guys, if you're not following me over on Instagram, my personal page is at Julian D. Dory and the podcast page is at Julian Dory Podcast. Both links are in the description below. I'm trying to build that out. I've never focused on it before, but it's important that obviously I get the fans over there because we announce a lot of things pertaining to the show. So I hope to see you follow me there. Check the links in the description. That, that the uh, Russians, were, had taken this um, piece of equipment that didn't have a full radar and it didn't wasn't able to identify its targets. And so when they, they shot kind of mistakenly at something that they thought was something and it was something else and it was all, it was all terrible, but it was an, an uh, let's call it an honest mistake. Well, one of the really fascinating things about this case is that technology is so important and technology is changing and new things are happening and new innovations are being developed as it's unfolding. And it changes the nature of the game. And what happened was um, an unemployed guy in the UK named Elliot Higgins is sitting in his underwear on his sofa um, watching coverage of Syria. And the there's some suspicion that the Assad regime is poisoning Chemical its own weapons. people with gas, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so he develops this thing called open source intelligence. And he's using, he's sifting through stuff that people put online to try to gather and like try to piece together what's happening. Fast forward to MH17 getting shot down and his team of volunteers from around the world, much like the IG that we were talking about earlier, people are kind of pitching in and, and, and lending their expertise and saying, okay, we're gonna look at dash cams and other information that people are putting forward and we're gonna be able to match the movements of this rocket launcher as it moves across um, the Eastern part of Ukraine. Mm. It's been sent in and they're able to identify the military unit that belongs to, they're de and um, they're able to identify who's under whose command it was operating. So this is not a militia 
um, that had managed to capture a piece of equipment that they didn't understand how to use. This was a reg regular Russian military unit operating under the command of GRU, the military intelligence. Mm. And so they, they drive this thing into a field, they sit under a busy international air route, and they're watching plane after plane after plane after plane go by for several hours, and then they pick MH17 out of the sky and shoot it down. They're later convicted. The, the the people in charge of this operation are later convicted in, in absentia in, in the, the Netherlands. Yeah. yeah. So um, it was it accidental. I mean, some people still, um, even in Bellingcat, say that like, it was a mistake. But the thing I, the thing that I push back against that is a modern military air defense system isn't just a rocket launcher with a radar next to it. It's a distributed system in which all of the sensors are interconnected and all of the rockets and other assets are also interconnected. So it's a distributed system. And just because this thing was in a field dozens or hundreds of miles away from you know whoever was in charge of it you don't one of the main things you learn when you study to be a um anti-aircraft missile operator especially one that that can reach seventy thousand feet mm. is you do not fire it unless your officer tells you to do it right mm. so i don't i have a i have a red button in front of me i don't just push that red button ever Unless the lieutenant, who's my boss, yes. tells me, and he, the lieutenant doesn't tell me to do it unless his boss tells him. Yes. So Thanks, there's like man. multiple levels up. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.